On the afternoon of September 16th, seven fires broke out in Changsha, the capital city of Hunan province, three of which were severe. He Huayan, telecom building of China Telecom Hunan Company, had the largest fire, which rose to the top of the online search list in China. But the Chinese government reported only the largest fire out of all the fires. In the afternoon of the same day, September 16th, Xi Jinping concluded his three-day trip to Central Asia, flew directly back, and arrived in Beijing late that night. Is it just a coincidence that so many fires broke out in a provincial capital city on the day Xi Jinping hurried back to China? The video shows the fire at the China Telecom building in Changsha started suddenly and spread from the lower levels upwards. In about 10 minutes, dozens of floors burned violently. Seeing from the side, the building was already in ruins with only the frames left. According to the news from Chinese social media, the building was completely burned down from the 5th floor to the 30th floor, including the server room. The officials of Hunan province in Changsha city have remained silent about the situation. Official media reported that there were no casualties and communications had not been interrupted. However, many local residents said that communication was disrupted after the fire and the telecommunication signal in Hunan province was paralyzed on a large scale from 3 p.m. and was only restored gradually from 8 p.m. onwards. So it is questionable whether there really are no casualties. A resident near the building told overseas Chinese media, there are several thousand people in the building. In addition to telecom employees, there are workers from other companies. The building burned down in 10 minutes and I heard people had no time to flee because there were numerous explosions inside the building. On the same day, the Hunan government tried to urgently control the impact of this fire. For example, Hunan radio station issued a notice asking the public not to forward any pictures and short videos of the fire on WeChat moments, WeChat, Weibo, Douyin, or other social media platforms. Changsha Telecom issued an internal notice that says no sharing, no commenting, no interviewing. According to public information, this building was completed in 2003. It was the first building in Changsha to exceed 200 meters with a height of 218 meters, the tallest building in Hunan at the time. It has been one of the landmarks in Changsha, consisting of a hub building and an east-west annex building with 42 floors above ground and two floors underground. According to a senior engineer who has worked for Hunan Telecom for many years, the telecom building carries the function of secretly collecting, processing, and analyzing the communication data set of the entire Chinese population. It means that the communication of any Chinese citizen is fully monitored, including the voice and text messages from cell phones and chat records of WeChat and QQ. They are systematically collected, processed, analyzed, and saved through the telecom company. The communication records of the general public that are of little value to the CCP are kept for three years while records of the people who are targeted by the CCP are kept for a long time. The engineer said the database is not kept in the building in Changsha, but in Zhangjiajie, a tourist city about four hours away by car. This large-scale confidential database bunker is buried hundreds of meters underground in the Zhangjiajie scenic area. Inside is a huge space. It is built solidly. The outer wall made of metal and concrete is enough to withstand the attack of nuclear weapons. These women who were busy picking cherries at the scenic spot probably never thought that the secrets of the state were buried under their feet. Come on, come on. Hey, you don't go. Come on, come on. Where are you going? 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 Where are you going
来看我的、啊、我有没有塑胶？我都是岁数的人了，还要进去这个样子的，看得出人了。强盗吗？看得出人。多大岁数了？好吃的很吗？ By the way, some media reported that there was an office of the Hunan Provincial Discipline Inspection Commission in the burned-down building. It is misinformation. The building belonging to the Hunan Provincial Commission for Discipline Inspection is close to the telecom building, but it isn't the same building. After the news of the fire, many people in the industry and the public began to question the cause of the fire, as it appeared to be somewhat odd. One mysterious part was that it burned down quickly, finishing almost the entire building in ten minutes. And the second oddity was that many people heard as many as a dozen explosions. One explanation is that the fire likely started by the building's exterior insulation material. The building was reported earlier this month to have failed in its fire maintenance project bidding, and there was a fire equipment overrun problem. But people who serve as assistant researchers in the Department of Civil Engineering and Materials Science think that the telecom building as a whole is a concrete structure. The dry concrete material is non-combustible. Such a large-scale layer-by-layer burning fire seems fishy. And where did so many explosions come from? Yes. <laughs> Regarding the sound of the explosion, the vast majority of the CCP's official media refrained from discussing this point. Few media mentioned the explosion, chalking it up to the sound of glass being blown. Some nearby netizens said they heard the sound at work in their own companies and thought it was thunder. They wondered why it was so intense. The sound of such a large explosion is really a result of glass exploding. The server room of the China Telecom building had 35 tons of underground oil tanks. I wonder if these oil tanks accelerated the explosion of the building. Then, is it possible that it was a man-made arson? Because almost at the same time, there were seven fires in Changsha City. The most serious was this China Telecom building, along with a logistics center, a large warehouse, and the rest were general fires, including a fire in a neighborhood next to a hospital. Even Changsha residents are questioning whether the fires were deliberately set. They wrote, "City leaders can't hold down the thousand-year-old city of Changsha. So many fires in one day seems out of the ordinary. So is it a mere coincidence that they appeared on the same day after Xi Jinping returned home from his visit to Central Asia? And if they were man-made arsons, who could have done them? Certainly, they are anti-Xi forces." And one possibility for choosing Hunan is that Hunan, a site once ruled by Zhou Bunchun, an official close to a key member of the Jiang faction, Zhou Yangkang, an official who was jailed in 2017, but the rest of his gang may still be around. So it isn't impossible to find someone to set a fire to stir things up before the 20th National Congress, which convenes on October 16th. Xi Jinping returned home from Uzbekistan overnight, probably because he was worried about moves pulled by anti-Xi forces at home. And before he got on the plane, he probably already heard about the unusual fire in Changsha. Of course, this is only a guess, and there is no evidence yet. Our channel has reported that in recent years, China has seen an extraordinary number of fires and explosions. Many of these disasters may be the result of tofu drag construction or inadequate fire codes in various types of buildings, but some are likely to have reasons behind them that the public is unaware of.
。大好大，消防车开了十几辆过来。Let's go back seven years to the explosion that many domestic and international media believe was linked to the struggle at the top of the Chinese Communist Party. On August 12, 2015, there was a huge fire and explosion in Tianjin that shook China. Official media said that 165 people were killed. However, overseas media revealed that more than 1,400 people had lost their lives and more than 700 were missing as a result of the explosion. A mushroom cloud appeared on the scene. Photos from the center of the explosion in Tianjin show that the extremely high temperatures generated by the blast have melted the metal parts of the cars to be shipped, and that the temperature at the center of the explosion reached 2,500 degrees Celsius, or 4,532 degrees Fahrenheit, a temperature that could instantly vaporize life. A large number of family members of the missing have been screaming and demanding that the authorities find their loved ones who are lost in the explosion, but the authorities haven't responded. The Hong Kong media, Zhongguo Mimao Magazine of that year, revealed that according to reliable sources, the big explosion was aimed at the anti-corruption efforts by Xi Jinping and Wang Qishan. Soon, a number of media outlets covered similar views. Most notably, an overseas Chinese media belonging to former party leader Jiang Zemin's faction reported the story most extensively and in the highest possible fashion. It was somewhat like the kidnappers in the kidnapping case who wanted to lay out their demands. A month before the big explosion in Tianjin, Hong Kong's Trend Magazine revealed that some high-profile, highly secretive meetings may be held in Tianjin, Binhai, New Area. A number of media suggested that an attack intended to take Xi's life was planned at a time when Xi was most likely to be in Tianjin Binhai New Area for the meeting. Even if the assassination plan was unsuccessful, it could be used to intimidate Xi by creating a catastrophe, as well as to negotiate and bargain, thereby blackmailing Xi into compromise and submission. On August 12, 2015, the 1,000-day anniversary of Xi's taking over as CCP's General Secretary, China's official media took stock of Xi's governance report card in the morning and in the evening. Explosive fireworks were delivered, according to overseas Chinese media reports. A person close to Jiang Nanhai told reporters that after the explosion, Xi Jinping jumped up in anger and didn't sleep for two nights. The most direct cause of the explosion was the arrest of two people by the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection, Dai Xianglong and Chao Feng. Dai Xianglong was once the top supervisor of the Communist Party's financial industry, and Chao Feng was Dai's son-in-law. After both men were arrested, Chao Feng's minions set off the explosion. In April 2015, Dai Xianglong, former mayor of Tianjin and former central bank governor, Was investigated for allegedly using his power for personal gain. This former governor of China's central bank made himself a name because of a serious case of insider trading. In 2005, when the renminbi appreciated, then Premier Wen Jiabao described the state's council's pertinent decision as a surprise. But before the renminbi appreciation decision was announced, 
Up to 22.8 billion U.S. dollars in mainland China were exchanged for renminbi during the same period, costing the country about 3.7 billion renminbi in just 90 minutes. It was found that the conversions were concentrated in 13 cities, including Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Tianjin, and Shenzhen, happening to accounts of financial institutions, small treasuries of the party and government departments, state-owned enterprises, and private tycoons. Upon hearing the report, Premier Wen angrily denounced, There is a mole. The mole is inside. It must be investigated. It can be said that Dai Xiong is one of the moles. In 2005, when former party leader Hu Jintao and Premier Wen Jiabao were still in power, the power of Hu and Wen were almost completely hollowed out by the Jiang faction. The former governor of the central bank and later mayor of Tianjin belonged to the Jiang faction. With only junior high school education, Che Fang spent his early years selling jeans in a clothing store in Shanghai. But because of his good looks and height, the only daughter of Dai Xionglong fell in love with him and married him, setting him on a fast track to prosperity. He was well known in China's equity industry and Hong Kong's capital market, having held at least 30 companies at his peak, 10 of which were in Beijing. Che Fang was taken away by the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection in June 2015. Sources said that Che Fang with his access to Dai Xionglong, the governor of the central bank, got insider information easily and swept through the stock market in China and Hong Kong for 13 years, making at least more than 10 billion US dollars. When he was arrested, he confessed to a money laundering case of over 14 billion US dollars involving the son and daughter in law of Jiang Zemin's partner, Dong Qinghong, and a senior official of Hunan province, Zhou Bunchun the longtime Changsha-based official we mentioned in the Changsha fire case. Che also disclosed the misdeeds of another heavyweight member of the Jiang faction, Zhang Gaoli. Zhang is currently a member of the Standing Committee of the Political Bureau of the CCP Central Committee and Vice Premier of the State Council. We did an episode on his sex scandal. From March 2007 to November 2012, Zhang Gaoli was the party secretary of Tianjin. Whenever a senior Communist Party official presides over a jurisdiction, he or she cultivates local influence so that he or she will be able to continue to control the local government even after leaving. When officials from other factions are sent to the area, they are called airborne forces, which means a bare-knuckle commander who does not yet have the allegiance of the local officials. It often takes years for them to find the time to develop and bring in some of their own people. It is difficult for outsiders to determine which senior officials in the Communist Party belong to the Jiang Zemin camp. However, there is a simple test. Virtually all senior officials of the Jiang faction actively follow his line of persecuting Falun Gong adherents. It's a shortcut for officials to gain the trust of Jiang and Zhang and to quickly rise through the ranks. Within the CCP, from the top to the bottom, those who deliberately distance themselves from the persecution will be regarded by Jiang and Zhang as not their own, or they are even considered enemies, because these people don't have the will to be tied to the same blood debt as one of them. In other words, if they can survive the future trial or pursuit of responsibility, they will not be trusted by Jiang and Zhang. After the Tianjin explosion, the Chinese official media publicly insinuated and blamed Zhang Gaoli at least four times, which is quite rare in China's bureaucratic circles. Historically, the CCP has not only lived off the hard work of the 1.4 billion Chinese people, but it has also used the people as hostages to bargain with its adversaries in the party's brutal struggles through massive harm to the people. In China, where disasters are becoming more and more frequent, there are many causes of disasters. Some, especially large fires or explosions or other events such as plane crashes, appear to be mysterious and cannot be explained by common sense. Behind these mysterious events, there are probably secrets that will never see the light of day.